You remember that last week uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples. It's really important that we saw that it's people who have seen that Christ is the one that was promised. He said, follow me, and they followed him. And you remember that uh, we talked about that they are uh, in the kingdom. Theirs is the kingdom. Why? Because of their connection to Jesus. They've seen that they're sinners, they see they need a saviour, and they are connected to Jesus. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we saw that Jesus then shows them the flavour of the kingdom. What does the kingdom look like? What is, it, what is it to be a kingdom citizen? Well, that's the beatitude, isn't it? This is the flavour of the kingdom. But this week it's a so what. Okay, this is, this is who you are, but so what? What happens next? Um, here's where we're going to go today. Jesus is going to be saying, be who you are. Don't hide the light that you are. Don't hide who you are so that the world will see who your father is. Be who you are. Don't hide who you are so that the world will see who your father is. I'm going to pray and then we're going to read the Bible. Our Heavenly Father, as you have spoken to us in your word already today, as you will speak to us as we read your word again, we pray that we might understand what you are saying to us, we might believe what you are saying to us, we might, by your Holy Spirit, uh, we might be the people you want us to be as you apply that word to our hearts. We do pray uh, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, so our Bible reading uh, today is Matthew 5. Verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither did people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Why, was it, why is it so important that we remember that Jesus is speaking to his disciples? Well, it's because in verse 13, we've read from, he says, you are the salt. He can only say that to people of the Beatitudes, the people who are in the kingdom, the people who take on the flavour of the kingdom. And we see that that's actually the flavour of Christ. So it's only those who are in the kingdom who can be called the salt. Now, so we can see that way, that the salt is to be beatitude to be people of the Beatitudes. Uh, We cooked up some uh, homemade uh, potatoes last night and we fried them up and and as as I'm putting on my salt, I'm saying, oh, this is like mercy. This is, this is hungering for righteousness. And so I felt that's a really good thing. And so the more the better. And so, uh, <laughs> but, but Jesus' point here is uh, that th- this is about flavor. Uh, this, is, this is the thing I think he's wanting to bring out in salt. Um, that to, the flavor of the kingdom is salty. And that's a good thing. So we are the salt of the earth. Now, what does it mean to be of the earth? Now, we are, we are part of the creation. That's a good thing. We don't stand apart from creation and kind of look in. We are actually part of the creation. In fact, the Beatitude said last week, didn't they, that we will inherit the land. This is, this is our world. We are part of this world, and that's a good thing. Now, our world at the moment, though, is broken, isn't it? You might say it has a, it has a bad taste, our world. But our Creator wants to show this world, what the, the, this broken world, what the remade world is going to look like. This is a broken and bad tasting world, but there is a good world coming. <coughs> How does he do that? Well, enter the salt of the earth. That's us, if we are connected to Christ. We are the good taste in a bad tasting world. But how, how are we going to be that? Well, look back the few verses. It's the Beatitudes. You, the Beatitudes is the content of our salt. We are, we are this good taste to a bad tasting world. So Christ is saying straight up, be who you are. Last week, this is who you are. 
you are citizens of the kingdom, this is how you taste. Now be who you are in the world that's your world. Well, that's only possible as we saw, as we saw, if you are connected to Jesus. So what are these people who connected to Jesus? What does it, what does it look like to be salt in the world? Well, I think it's as simple as taking time to listen to someone who wants to talk to you or forgiving, making peace, not gossip. We saw that. We saw all those good things last week. Defending the powerless. Maybe it's in your class if you're at school, uh, making peace, uh, hungering for righteousness. All those things are things that come up for us every day. The decisions we make to actually uh, be meek, be humble, rather than push our rights, all those things. It's the salt is the Beatitudes. But you would think, wouldn't you, that if we are a good taste, that a world that essentially has a bad taste, they would welcome that good taste, wouldn't you? They think, oh, that saltiness, we love that saltiness. But the Beatitudes have said, haven't they, back in verse, uh, verse 11, that it is actually uh, our saltiness produces opposition. Our saltiness produces persecution and rejection. Why would a good taste produce opposition? But it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a surprise, should it? Because the, we take on the flavor of our master, Jesus. Now, this is a Jesus that the world has rejected by and large. So it's not surprising then that the world who has rejected Jesus rejects those people who taste like Jesus. Uh, but I think I need to say here that make sure it's your saltiness that's being rejected. As a young, as a young man, uh, and I'll, I'll have a go at myself as a young man, I'm still not as different as I would like to be, but I would stir up arguments with people. I was a Christian, I would stir up arguments with people, and I would, you know, having a go at them, and they'd be upset and they'd be rejecting me. I'm thinking, yes, how salty I am being. No, not salty, sinful. So, so when, when you're thinking about salt, think about the flavor of the kingdom. Think about what is Christ like. Be like that. Don't be rejected for being a jerk. Like I was. So we are the salt of the earth. Be who you are in the world. Now, there's a warning that comes next though, isn't there? See, it is possible to lose our saltiness. The rest of 13. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how could it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. I'll just say here that word uh, when it says in the NIV loses its saltiness. It's actually a close, the word is closer to taste if salt loses its taste. So we can lose our taste. Well, how can that possibly happen? Well, let's think about how do we get to be the salt? How was it that these disciples were, were the salt? Their connection to Jesus. How, does, how, do, how do people stay the salt? It's they're connected to, to Jesus. It is that ongoing, active dependence upon Jesus. It's that connection. So I can think we could probably see our answer. How is it that we can lose our saltiness? It is actually by losing that dependence upon Jesus, by actually uh, not uh, nurturing that relationship. Uh, and we've seen it. We've seen it, haven't we? I, I have seen it myself. I'm old enough now to have, a, a, a sadly, a long list of people who I once thought were salty Christians. They did too. They thought they were salty, and yet now they, they, they have, what is it? Was it work pressures? Was it family pressures? Whatever it might have been, they've actually turned their back on Jesus, maybe not, not angrily, maybe not, act, maybe not what they would call actively, but they now have lost that ongoing active connection with Jesus. They have lost their saltiness. And what does Jesus say happens to those who have lost their saltiness? They are good for nothing except to be thrown out. Friends, I think he's actually talking about not being in the kingdom. To have lost saltiness is to not be in the kingdom. And if you're like me, uh, your question is, well, if I can lose my saltiness, can I lose my salvation? It's a good question. 
Um, I think an answer, or my answer, would be uh, if, we, if we are salty by our connection to Jesus, we will remain salty by our connection with Jesus. Jesus gives us this warning that we might stay connected to Jesus. If you stay salty to the end, it will, it will have shown that you have always been saved. So heed the warning, that's why he's giving it to us, that we may remain connected to him, that we remain salty. I just want to flag uh, here that um, I've been talking about salt being a taste. I know that there are many people who read this who would interpret Jesus as saying that salt is a preservative. Now, certainly salt is a preservative at that time, but I don't actually think that's his main idea here. So there are people who say, um, Christians help, I'm quoting here, Christians help preserve what is good in the culture, or another person, uh, we preserve society from its inherent evil. I think it is true that we are to do good to those around us, but I don't think Jesus is saying here that we are to, where our, our mandate is to make our, those people around us good, rather I think he's saying we are to show God's goodness to those around us. You can bail me up afterwards if you, if you want to talk about that. Uh, and that would be perfectly fine. I won't be grumpy. All right. So, so Jesus' first picture is be the salt that you are. And he goes on to another image. I, uh, I don't have a uh, digital clock in my, in, in our bedroom. Uh, so I have to fumble around for my phone. And generally what happens is I fumble around, I accidentally pull it out of the charger, it falls on the floor. The, the idea was to grab the phone, hide it in my hands, and uh, just check the time, put it back on. That's generally not what happens. The phone flips around and I hear, oh, what are you doing? Uh, light wants to be seen, doesn't it? Light wants, to, light wants to get out there and actually do its job to illuminate. My, my hope was just to keep the thing hidden. But no, light wants to be seen. And, and, our, and Jesus' next uh, idea is actually expanding on this already, what he's already started with the salt. You see, it's the same idea. Like salt, because of your connection to Jesus, you are the light. We don't have to produce the light. We don't have to make it. We don't have to sort of achieve it somehow. We are the light. But light wants to be seen. Uh, if you're the light in a dark world, you will stand out. Like a city on a hill, you can't be, you won't be hidden. It's not the idea. The idea is to be seen. But do you remember what saltiness, not saltiness, uh, brings? Salty Christians bring Opposition, rejection, persecution. Now, if we're light in a dark world, we're going to stand out. You can see our problem. If we're salty, we attract opposition. If we're light, we stand out. So what's going to be our temptation? I don't want to do the thing that's going to bring persecution. I want to hide that light. Yes, I am the light, but I want to hide the light. That's going to be our temptation. If you're in a battle, you're drawing flak, you're drawing enemy fire. What do you want to do? You want to hide. But our purpose is to be, is to be seen. What does Jesus say? Verse 15. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. But instead they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. The purpose of light is to be seen. The purpose of beatitude people is to be tasty, be seen to express that kingdom. Now, <clears throat> how is that going to apply in, in safe Narrabri? We, we have in our country um, a Judeo-Christian heritage, you would call it, uh, Judeo-Christian ethics. We're what you might call, compared to other countries, we might be a good country. People are, are kind of good here. Now, so how is Narrabri a dark world? Well, friends, I want to suggest to you that our so-called Judeo-Christian culture, um, our morally upright culture, it's, I think it's always been a thin veneer. You see, uh, you might be old enough to remember a time when uh, most people went to church and uh, you might have seen Christian things on the TV in prime time. Society was just generally kind of more moral. Uh, 
And even now, you might have a neighbour, if you've talked to them, they might have voted no in the same-sex uh, marriage um, debate election thingy. Uh, they might seem to have the same values as you. So why would you draw persecution from someone who seems to take the same view of the world as you do? But, well, where does the persecution come from? Let's just go back to verse 11, the Beatitudes. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me, because of Jesus. Persecution will come because of Jesus. You see, your neighbour may have the same sort of view of abo about abortion as you do or something, but if you begin to tell them about their sin, about their accountability to Jesus, about the Jesus who came and died a gruesome death that, they, that he might take the punishment that they deserve, that's going to be a different story. Our culture generally, maybe it's changing now, it's definitely changing now, has been okay with God, been okay with Christian values, not been so okay with Jesus. We have a, we have an I did it my way culture, and that, that, friends, is a passive rebellion against the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not, we are not okay with submitting to Jesus. I was talking to someone the other day, we're all talking about some nice things and whatever. As soon as I began to, because he was okay with me being a minister, that's fine, that's a nice thing. As soon as I mentioned Jesus, he got in the car. It was sort of an amicable parting, but the Jesus, no, don't talk to me about Jesus. Friends, I think our Judeo-Christian culture has often been confused with the piercing spotlight of Jesus Christ crucified for sinners. It is Jesus who is going to draw the persecution or the rejection. But friends, I don't want you to fear as that thin veneer kind of riddles away to nothing. Uh, our culture is obviously becoming, uh, well, becoming, it's becoming what it is in a sense. I think it's, we're, we're, a, we're a dark culture here, but I think the veneer is, is starting to be rubbed away. Um, don't fear when that happens. Your light will shine out more brightly in the darkness. Uh, even, even as that light becomes less tolerable to the, to the world, don't hide it. How are we going to do that? Well, I think we can just let people know we're a Christian. I've, it's, it's a wonderful thing, actually, in the in the in the country, as opposed to the city. People see you, people people. You are on show. We are on show to each other in the country. So much more than the city. You're going to be anonymous in the city. You can't be anonymous in the country. That's a great thing for Christians because people watch us. So uh, put put yourself out there with non-Christians. Put yourself in the company of non-Christians. Uh, if you don't know, know any, just go and meet some. There's plenty of opportunities. Actually, I think that's much le less of an issue uh, in the in the country. In the city, I would have to actually push that. Go and meet some non-Christians. You can stay in your little bu bubble. Here, you can't do that. That's a great thing. Um, but, you see, you probably don't realise just how different you are to those people around you because you are the salt, you are the light. You might not, if you've got a sensitive conscience, you might not feel that beatitude and beatitude. You might not feel that salty. But take Jesus at his word. If you are connected to him, you are. You have, you have probably have no idea about how you come across to other people. So let people around you see the work that Jesus is doing in you, even if you can't see it yourself. Because he didn't say, go and be the light. He said, you are the light. You are the salt. I... Um, I was reading recently about a woman in a North Korean labor camp. That's a dark world. Because she had been light in her own culture, she had been, as a Christian, she had been put into this labor camp. She was hated by those around her, particularly by her, her cellmate. Uh, so she'd been light, and, and it's so cold there that uh, sleeping is difficult. And so her, 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 her cellmate, who was her, in a sense, her enemy, she would she would hold this woman's feet at night just so that she could sleep. Now, that is, that is quite an extreme example, um, but what it might look like here. You might be, you might be married to someone who's not a believer. Uh, you might have a, a mum and dad who's not a believer. You don't have to force things. You are the salt. You are the light. You don't have to force that. 
just be that flavor. I would, I would confront my dad all the time. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, and eventually I thought, you know what? I don't think that's my role. I don't think that's my role. And, and I, and I, and I just started to try to be at peace with my dad rather than confronting him all the time. And my mum, who's a Christian, said to me a little later on, you know, your dad sees that. I'd actually, <laughs> I actually had been more salty by not continually confronting him. People are going to see that. I'm not saying you don't, don't tell, don't take opportunities to talk about Christ, but you are actually going to be salt, but you just don't know it. Okay. <clears throat> why, why, what is all this for? What is the, what is the purpose of our salt and our light? Well, wouldn't you love to be, if you were a sinner and you were someone who had been taken from the darkness into the light, wouldn't you want people to know who had done that? Wouldn't you want people to actually know that person, get to know him? Well, that is our purpose, friends. That is the purpose of all things, that God would be known, that his God would be given glory. And so imagine a wonderful scenario that you are used by God your saltiness is used by God to bring people to Christ. They put their faith in Christ and God, and that is the way that God is given glory by people putting their faith in His Son. That's always been the purpose of God's people. We saw it in both readings. The ancient Israel was to be a holy nation, priests. What one thing priests do is represent God to people. They were to represent their God, the goodness of their God. Look how good He has been to us, to the world. We saw that again in Peter. The people of Jesus Christ, God's people of Jesus Christ, do the same. We represent God to the people of the world. Um, what, what, is, what does Peter say? He says, we are chosen so that we could declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, or as, Peter, as uh, Jesus puts it in verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Now that sounds like a wonderful thing, doesn't it? They see our good deeds, they praise our Father. See, what are these good deeds? They are the Beatitudes. They, they, they're us expressing that kingdom. Now, yes, that is a wonderful scenario, but I don't think that's all Jesus is talking about. Because the question I ask myself as I'm reading this, thinking, how is it that if people see Christ in us and they scorn us because of Christ, how does that bring glory to the Father? How does it glorify the Father that his Son is scorned in his people? How does that work? Well, Peter's helpful again here. Uh, see, we read out, even though, in 1 Peter 2, even though others may accuse you of wrongdoing, they will see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. You see, that glory that comes is an ultimate glory. It's a final glory. It may not always be a willing glory. Now that is a sad thing to say, that our good deeds might actually uh, will bring glory to God as people acknowledge that we were people of the light. We were Christ's people. They will do that to their judgment, but, the, but God the glory, God the Father will get the glory. See, that's the ultimate purpose of all things. Isn't it an honour? to be able to give glory by being people who know that we are chosen and saved and redeemed. So friends, I want you to be that tasty salt that you are. And I want you not to hide. I, I, want, to, I want you to do it. Christ, your master wants you to do it. To, to not hide that light that you have been made. And we will display the joy of being God's people and that will bring glory to our Father in heaven. Why don't we pray to him now? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have brought us into your kingdom by being connected to your dear Son, Jesus. You have made us salt, you have made us light. We pray that we would be what we are, that we would not hide that light. This will only happen by your work of your Holy Spirit in our hearts to change us. We want to be beatitude people. Would you make us those people? Would you make us take on the flavour of, of what you have made us? We do pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.